chose to do this. We've got some other guys now that are going to choose to work harder, compete at a higher level, or you're where you are. It will not change for them. And it's not what we hope and wish for. It's what they do. After the game, Patino talked about this team not necessarily being better than last year's team, but more difficult to guard because of what you have on the front. I thought he said it was really well coached. Did he say that? <laughs> <laughs> it was implied. Yeah, it was implied. It was implied. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but do you agree with that, the team being <laughs> more difficult to guard because of the shooters that you have and then, you know, Harrelson and the emergence of him? You had five first round draft picks. <laughs> okay, five first round draft picks. This team shoots the ball better than that team. This team at times executes and listens better than that team. That team was as talented a team I've ever coached. Um, the best team I've coached to this point was the 96 team that beat Kentucky to start the season. We had DeMarcus Cousins and no other draft picks. They had 11 or 10 draft picks on that team. They had the pro team, and we beat them to start the season. That was the best team I've ever coached. Let's hope this turns into the best team that I've ever coached. Now, I'll say this. To do that, we got to grow as a team. I'm saying it again. Individual players are getting better. I'm so proud of Brandon Knight. Still, he had five turnovers. Three of them unnecessary. He had two or three shots did not need to take. Okay? But think of where he's gone from Hawaii to now. You look at Deron Lamb from the beginning of the year to now. You look at Terrence Jones. But Terrence, I would beg to tell you, let's watch in the next two weeks. You're going to see an absolutely different player. Because my will is stronger than his. <laughs> so he will be one of those guys now that you'll see. Because I'm zeroed. I'm like, okay, now that I've watched, this is what we got to do. Partly because our team needs it, partly because he needs it. And I think that <clears throat> at the end of the day, if we can get every one of these guys playing better, and then we start getting better as a team, and we better <coughs> execute better, um, I'll be honest with you, against them, the last five minutes, wow, did we execute. We truly executed like it's a team with five seniors. We came down and every time it was clockwork what we were doing. It was amazing. Out of bounds plays. I mean, I could say it, boom, do it, and what one was out of a timeout. The other was not out of a timeout. I just said, run it. Terrence Jones gets it and scores. Not out of a timeout. We ran late clock and run a play, lob. Next play, lob. No timeout. We didn't call a timeout. So, you know, proud of that. But we, my thing to them right now, humble, hungry, just like I was a year ago with last year's team. That's all I'm talking about. Humble, yet hungry. What concerns you about um, they're a, a team that runs great stuff. I watch tape of them, and I'm like, holy cow, they run. Drexel beat them, and I'm going to tell Bruiser, his, he's running better stuff than you're running. But then I said, how in that world did you win? Well, Drexel made shots and Penn didn't. Um, but they run good stuff. They're going to play zone. Um, you know, they'll do stuff to bother us. Um, we, you know, we got to come and play. We've been a team that has shown up for every game, at least tried. You know, I, Hawaii, I think we ran out of gas playing six guys, but um, every other game, I think we've we've you know, we've come with a great sense of urgency. John, there's been a lot of talk in Louisville about how many of your fans made it into that game. Was it amazing? Did, are you past the point of surprise, or did that surprise you? I did not realize until everybody knew we were winning the game and their fans hit the doors. <laughs> and then what I saw was, oh my gosh, we got a lot of people in here. What would you say, two or three thousand? Easy. Yeah. Maybe more. I mean, how they got the tickets? Did they buy season tickets to get into that game? A lot of them were down low. Those are the expensive seats. You know, you go get the bourbon and the other stuff. I mean, the no seats. I mean, you had to pay. So I don't know. Or I'll tell you what, their season ticket base is so happy with me because they scalped those tickets and their season was paid for by that ticket. Right. So hey, I'll watch it on CBS. My whole season's paid for. I'll watch the ESPN game. I'll watch the Big East games. I'll give up this ticket. Maybe that's why. You know they're trying know. to track it, track down who sold what tickets to. They are? For what reason? They want to be happy, not happy in about it. <laughs> What's that? They want to find out who was sitting in that seat and try to track it to 
who sold it to who? Who were the Louisville Booster Rolls? I heard the CIA's involved. <laughs> 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 I don't think you met you and Marcus Cousins in 96, did you? Yeah. Who did I say? You said Marcus Cousins. Cousins. Did I say DeMarcus Cousins? Yeah. yeah. Senior moment. They were both really good. <laughs> Senior moment. That's all right. And my team, just for somebody said that someone wrote that the team I played six guys was a Memphis team. That was a UMass team. One of these guys told me somebody said it. It was a UMass team that I played six guys. I never played six guys in Memphis. We usually, well, I did when a couple guys got hurt. I played Nathaniel Luke. How often do you seven. remind Coach Delk that they had so many more first rounders than you did in the UMass Kentucky? That and should have played on the ball. I and mean, then <laughs> probably the two things I point out to Tony. You, you mentioned the six guys, and you mentioned that there's a couple of guys you're really going to lock in on. and get the most you can out of them. Is that because you don't have 12 and 13 guys? You can't no, just say, go no. next? I, I no, I want the players who are not playing well to play better. And I want the guys that are playing all right, I want it stepped up now. I want to bring it out. I want you to, I want you to play harder. I want you to play with more intensity. I want you to have more of a sense of urgency and desire. If not, you're getting on a treadmill. So again, I, let me, before I walk in, there's all kinds of ways of doing this job. Uh, there's the bullwhip. You absolutely kill them. You train them, you yell at them, you make them run stairs, you make them run, you run them to death. Guys have had success doing that. There's the bully approach. You bully them. You headbutt them, you grab them, you, you just bully them. There's that approach. The other approach is that you get them without a break to practice a hard amount of time and then you're out. And if you need more, you get those guys getting extra on their own. There's all kind of, there's six o'clock in the morning guys. We're gonna work for an hour at 6 a.m. and let everybody know we work harder than everybody else. Then we're gonna come back and practice. I've just always believed you don't wanna overwhelm these kids. They're kids. You get them your practice time. They did not see tape on Louisville until the game day meal that morning at eight. They did not watch tape. Now they may have watched them on TV, I don't know. But the tape they saw from our staff was that morning. They never see a scouting report. I see. John Robick is preparing me to coach the game, not preparing them with a scouting report of tape. He's preparing me. I want them to worry about us. Now, the guys that need extra, we give them extra. Who taught me that great lesson? Josh. Now, what that's done is got Darius doing extra, Eloy doing extra, and a couple other guys are choosing. If you don't want to do extra, don't have anybody ask me why you're not playing. You either do it and start changing and change your habits so you'll play better or you're done. But Josh has proven to me that there are certain guys you need to zero in on and treat them different. You know, I've always said, here's our practice, this is what it is, and you know, you get it done in this amount of time. Well, this team is showing me that that's not necessarily right. Brandon Knight does not need to go four hours of practice. And neither does DeAndre Liggins. If you had DeAndre, 6 a.m. in the morning, and then you go and do a three-hour practice in the afternoon, how would his mind be? He'd be, he'd, this is what he looked like. <laughs> he would be jumbled. I mean, he, you get him to do his work and get it done. He's got to do academics. These guys got tutors. They got all the other things in their lives. Plus, you know what? They're in college, but we have some guys here that I've got